Cooper Carter here for Fractal Audio Systems at G66. And on this week's Fractal Friday, I'm giving you a tone tour through my own live FM9 rig that I've got here on the floor. We're here at the 38 Songwriters Festival in beautiful Grayton Beach, Florida. I'm playing a solo set here with my uh, solo group. And so I'm gonna tour you guys through the different sounds that I use on any solo gig, but then also for this one specifically, um, I've programmed in a couple new sounds uh, just for a couple of tunes that we're covering. So I'll take you through those as well. What I want to do though is start off by just showing you how I'm running the FM9 as far as the actual setup on the layouts on the floorboard. As much as I love getting into the details uh, and really tweaking sounds on the front end of a show, once I get into a live environment, I want to be concentrating on playing and I really want all of the gear to kind of get out of my way. Uh, I've got my Ernie Ball Music Man Cutlass here, uh, which is a great example of that because the Music Man guitars are just so well crafted. Uh, they really just get out of your way and let you play. And I've got the FM9 set up to really do the same thing. So let's take a look first off uh, at how I've got the layouts going, and then we'll tour through the sounds. I'll show you some effects. We'll do some playing. I hope you guys enjoy it. Again, in the vein of kind of keeping it simple, I like to use one preset for an entire show if I can, and then rely on scenes uh, to bring in different sounds. And really, I'm looking at just three core amplifier tones. I've got a super clean based on a Fender Bandmaster, which is the Band Commander, uh, and it sounds a little bit like this. I use that uh, sparingly throughout the night, a couple different parts, uh, intros and very clean parts. But what I like to live on most of the time uh, is this AC20 sound um, that's based on the AC20 treble. And it really is the meat and potatoes of my entire live sound. It's a pretty uh, standard edge of breakup sound. It can clean up really nicely if I roll the volume knob back. And then if I add any kind of pedals to it, it gets really dirty really quick. So scene three is just the AC20 uh, with a drive pedal on. It's an 808 with a little bit of delay. And uh, I've got a tap tempo here that'll adjust the time of the delay so I can make that a lot more expansive. It can be much more kind of a slapback thing. And that's all adjustable just right here on this tap tempo. And again, so we're really talking so far three sounds, but only two different amp types so far. Uh, my fourth scene is my ODS lead, and it's based on the ODS 100 HRM. Uh, and this sound is much bigger, much broader. I like to kind of bring the tap a little wider on this. And this is my kind of facsimile of sort of the Eric Johnson type live sound. <laughs> That's obviously just like a huge lead. Um, and I use that again, sort of for much more blatant lead type sounds. The uh, AC20 leads a little more kind of standard blues rock. Fair, uh, but the ODS lead is much more of a statement. That's a, a delay, a multi-tap delay, a multi-delay, and then a big reverb. And then my final main sound here is based, again, on the Bandmaster sound, um, and it's a big atmospheric, and I like to use it at the top of tunes 
to set the stage before going in, like maybe a big clean intro, uh, and then a couple other special parts. It sounds like this. Really just big, expansive, pretty clean. Um, so again, five sounds, but it's really just three amp types, the Bandmaster, the AC20, and then the ODS. Um, for this particular set, we're doing a couple covers at this show. Um, and I like to kind of live, again, sort of in a more vintage uh, area as far as the kind of distortion and the kind of overdrive I'm getting from my sounds. So for the kind of 90s, 2000 rock tunes, uh, sometimes these kind of sounds don't work quite as well. I can turn off the delay and the reverb and maybe turn on a drive on my AC20 and sort of get into this territory. <laughs> But if I want something a little bit tighter, uh, like I said, for a cover, I've just added a, uh, a fourth amp type here for this show. This is a Friedman HBE 2010, and it gives me that kind of just right up the middle tight rock kind of dry thing. <laughs> And then the final sound I've got here on my scenes layout is just that same dry rock uh, amp type, but I've added an 808 and a little bit of delay just for like a good old kind of, uh, you know, rock sound. <laughs> Throw in the wah pedal. This is uh, based on a Vox wah, it's my favorite wah type in the fractal. <laughs> So really, again, for the vast majority of the night, um, you see I've got seven scenes here, but I'm really mostly using the AC-20 and the AC-20 lead scenes. Um, and the scene selections here really just help me avoid a lot of tap dancing. You know, going from here to here is really just turning on a drive in a delay. Which brings me to my next page. So if I go to this AC-20 sound and kick over to this effects page here, um, I have some instant access switches across the bottom. I've got drive one. I've got a switch to change between the four channels of this drive. So if I turn on the drive, here's my AC20. Uh, here's my AC20 without any drive. Here it is with the 808. Here it is with a uh, Chandler type uh, three knob tube drive. And then here we go over to a jam ray. And then one of my all time favorites, the bender fuzz. <laughs> So I've got four different drives right there. I've also got a, a chorus sound. And then of course I've got my delay. And I've got a reverb that I pretty much keep on all the time, but every once in a while I want to turn it off and really dry things up but the reverb pretty much stays on most of the night. And that's just a little cathedral reverb, uh, really low mix, but it's there to just kind of tie everything together with a little bit of glue. The one fun trick that I do have in this preset uh, is the pitch block. And I've got two channels on that, so I can switch the channels by holding down this button. But if I go to kind of a normal tone and turn on channel A here, you'll hear that I've got uh, a virtual capo set to actually go down a half step. So we've got one song in the set that is in E flat standard. Uh, and so I like to not have to bring a second guitar out for that one song. So instead of bringing out a second guitar just for one tune, I can just tune the guitar down a half step automatically. That's a really convenient way to uh, not have to bring out as much gear. And then also uh, sometimes like perfect example this week, I was pretty sick last week. My voice is not really where it needs to be uh, for me to feel completely confident. So 
I have run into shows where it's really helpful to just be like, okay, my voice isn't feeling it tonight. I'm gonna bring the whole set down a half step and just one button. And there I am in E flat for the entire night. Also though, if I hold down the channel switch that I mentioned, uh, I can go to channel B and now I've got a 12 string type emulation for uh, one of the songs that we play. And I just want a little bit of that 12 string effect. And again, don't necessarily want to bring a 12 string out. <laughs> And in a mix, that really just comes alive, though. So it's... Instant access, 12-string guitar uh, without having to bring out a 12-string. So that's kind of my pitch toolbox. I've got my virtual capo and then the 12-string emulation. Uh, next up on the effects, I just have this big... Uh, multi-delay here and it's really what comes in uh, for the ODS lead for that big expansive Eric Johnson live at Austin City Limits and 90s kind of thing um, and then also brings in obviously a really atmospheric sound when you're running cleaner so it's the Aurora type multi-delay uh, and I do have two channels of that one uh, they're both the same delay but one of the channels has just the uh, the level of that parallel delay a good bit higher for the atmospheric and then finally, I switch to a third page, and these are a little bit buried. I generally try not to go this deep into the menus. Um, and to be honest, I would probably, um, if I were running this kind of every night, have an FC6 out to the right and have these effects on the FC6 all the time so that I had instant access to them without switching around. But for this gig, um, we're playing songs that these last couple effects come in so sparingly on that it's really not a big deal for me to just click to this next page here. I go to more effects and I've got a tremolo panner, a flanger, and a rotary here. Uh, and I'll play you through those sounds real quick. The tremolo panner, again, I use on one tune, so I can just kind of turn it on. Really nice vintage types, tremolo. Uh. Sounds great on the AC-20. Uh, next up, I've got the flanger, and that, again, uh, really just a special effect that comes on in one part of one tune. Uh, so I'll go ahead and play that and then kick the flanger on. This is really, uh, I'm in love with this flanger sound. It's kind of a shame that I really only use it on about one measure every set. But... <laughs> of fun there uh, and then finally I've got a rotary or Leslie type effect which probably is my all-time favorite effect to bring in I kind of think of rotary as like a, uh, a classier version of chorus I'm a big George Harrison fan Eric Clapton fan and uh, David Gilmore and they've obviously all used rotary effects to great effect so um, here's the AC 20 again and, uh, if I turn on the rotary <laughs> But I also, again, uh, taking advantage of the amazing abilities of the FM9, I have a uh, hold button here and it actually changes the channel on the rotary from A to B. Exact same rotary settings as far as what the speaker cabinet actually is set up to do, uh, but the speed uh, is much higher. So on channel A, it's at 1.14 hertz. <laughs> And then on channel B, it's up to 8 hertz, and I've set it so that, like a real Leslie, it'll actually ramp up slowly over a set period of time, uh, and the, two, the drums and the horns will accelerate naturally when I switch channels. So I'll just play that for you guys and switch the channel here by holding down the button, and you'll hear it. <laughs> So that's another fun little trick in the toolkit. That also works uh, really nicely when you've got a super overdriven sound. I like to use it uh, at the end of songs to kind of just bring up the energy right before uh, a big uh, 
inch to a tune. So you can have the rotary. <laughs> A great way to end a set, maybe just kind of, all right, thank you so much, good night. The rotary spins up, a really fun sound. So there you go, those are the, all of the live sounds that I really need on any given night. And by bringing in these three different amp types uh, and then bringing out various effects, uh, bringing in and out various effects rather, I really have access to all of the tones that I feel like I need uh, to play pretty much any kind of sound. The one thing I probably wouldn't be able to cover uh, necessarily with this setup is like hardcore metal stuff. Um, but this is not that kind of gig. And if I were doing that, I would put together a preset that was much more in that vein. But for me, with three, uh, these three sounds, super clean, edge of breakup, more kind of classic rock territory, uh, and then some pop rock stuff is all really easily accessible. Um, and I do generally bring out a guitar with humbuckers as well, uh, which can bring those rock tones even more into kind of a beefier, aggressive territory if I did need to cover some more like maybe 80s type um, rock stuff, Def Leppard, that sort of thing. But for my own tunes, this preset really gets it all done. And then again, all I've done for this gig where we are, uh, where we are doing a couple of rock covers is just bring in a fourth amp channel on that same amp block. And I've got more of a kind of straight up modern, tight, aggressive rock sound. So one preset, a ton of different sounds. The FM9, uh, in my opinion, is really the sweet spot in the Fractal lineup. Obviously, Axe 3 flagship model, a uh, little bit bigger to take out because you've got it in the rack, you've got to bring a foot controller. The FM9 does everything that I wanted to do for this set and more, uh, and I really just love using this unit. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little run through my tones uh, and my very compact live rig here, and I will see you guys very soon on the next Fractal Friday.